Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. I have recently obtained some Raspberry Pi 3s, which are great. You know I'm into retro gaming, and you know I've previously built some stealth arcades. That is a monitor, a regular PC monitor with a Raspberry Pi inside full of retro games. Um, and I've even hooked up the USB ports and things of that monitor correctly, so that when I plug in my joystick straight into the side of the monitor, I can play the games with my little game pads. So I've recently got Raspberry Th Pi 3s. Now these are far more juicy power-wise than the original I was using, because I was using original Model B, so this is like a couple of generations later. They're really better. They've got four times the memory, they're a quad-core processor, they've got built-in Wi-Fi this time, so I don't need any dongles, more USB ports, and built-in Wi-Fi. So lots of nice connectivity. Instead of using the full-size SD card as well, they're using these little micro SD cards. So they're a little bit more convenient. So for this project, you will need one Raspberry Pi and one micro SD card to hold your operating system. I suggest at least 16 gigabytes because you want to leave plenty of room for your ROMs. Okay, what else do we need? If your monitor doesn't support HDMI, you'll need a way of getting into it. I'm using an HDMI to DVI adapter. And this one is actually designed so it shoves in the back of the monitor and basically I'm going to hang the Raspberry Pi off the back. I didn't want a long trailing wire. You'll also need a joypad, of course. I'm going to use an Xbox 360 wired controller because they work very well. Um, technically, this board should be able to su support the wireless Xbox 360 controllers via Bluetooth, but I really haven't had time to explore that, so I'm not going to cover that in this video. You'll be feel free to experiment and let me know how you get on. And then I've got an official Raspberry Pi power supply, which is an output of 5.1 volts at 2.1 amps. Oh, sorry, 2.5 amps. So this is juicy enough to run the uh, new Raspberry Pi fully. Also, if your monitor doesn't have sound, which the one I'm going to be using today doesn't, you need a speaker. And I'm going to use this speaker off a packet of Pringles. So if you've got any of these free offer things, while uh, that's all going on, please go onto the internet uh, and download a copy of RetroPie. I'm going to put the link on the website. That's a pre-built version of uh, the Raspberry Pi operating system with all the emulation and interface and everything all set up for you. So once that's all in, all you have to do is just plug in the joystick and literally you can get on, load your ROMs and start playing. Um, there are a few gotchas with that we might just cover because some of the firmware of the Raspberry Pi has changed. So I did need to shuffle some files around, but hopefully by the time you're looking at this, you'll not need to do that. And what we'll cover as well a bit later is how to actually set up the Wi-Fi. So if you want to do a little bit more of your Raspberry Pi than just play the games, um, in fact, just to make it a bit of ease of use for you copying games and things, get yourself a wireless keyboard as well. Wireless keyboard and mouse so you can actually you know, type things in and access it at a low le level operating system. So I'll just show you the monitor as well, what I'm going to use. I've got this uh, Samsung monitor, I believe well, it's about a 24 inch widescreen monitor. And if you look on the back here, you might just about see that it's only got VGA and DVI inputs. So how I'm going to hook this all up... I'm so lazy I don't want to move the camera and fanny around with that. We'll just hook it up right now. Look at that. Plug your adapter into your DVI connector. There we go. You can see it's sticking out there. I've already got the image of Retro Pi actually on this uh, SD card here. Okay, so I'm just going to plug my Raspberry Pi straight in. There we go. So you should end up with something a little bit like this. I know it's not great, and uh, in time we can get a case for it, but that'll work fine. So into one of the USBs, we're just going to plug the Xbox controller. Into this audio port, we're going to plug our Pringle speaker, and into this USB port, we're going to plug our power. Right, let's see how this uh, all goes together once we turn it on. Okay, so it's all set up here on this monitor. I'm just about to turn it on so you can see what happens. So I've turned on the power to the monitor and the Raspberry Pi behind. Just uh, in the interest to save time and show you something, I've actually got the keyboard and mouse plugged in as well. So we're going to have a quick look at transferring the files across. I've got some ROM files on the USB pen drive that's also plugged into one of the Raspberry Pi spare ports. So we're going to have a quick go at copying some of those ROMs. And while I'm at it, I might as well fill the screen with the glory of the Raspberry Pi, because that's what you're here to look at at the end of the day. There we go. Tightly focused. So sometimes you see messages like this and it's going to do something and 
failed to start USB mount service. That's probably because I've actually got the USB pen drive in and it's complaining about something, but this is a pretty good build. It seems to sort most things out. You might be able to hear a noise in the background. That's because I got speakers plugged in. Great, so it started up. So I'll just go through the menu very quickly before I just show you the configuration. So here you've got uh, the actual band in the middle shows you what system you're currently selected. It's very crisp, very high res graphics. Amiga, Apple II, Dreamcast, Macintosh, Neo Geo, MS-DOS, ports. I think it's the RetroPie configuration for the actual software that's controlling everything on here. Scum VM for your point and click adventures. Infocom for your text-based ones. So you might want your keyboard for that. And as you add more ROMs, more and more things will actually start to appear. So if you've got Arcade, they'll appear. So I'm just going to push Start on the controller so I get to the menu. And I'm actually going to quit at this point because I'm going to quit Emulation Station, yes, because I want to show you something on the keyboard. So I've got my keyboard and mouse right here. We won't need the mouse. So if you run your top command, or let's see if we have HTOP. No, just top <laughs> top command. You can see all of your, uh, you've got underneath an, a Linux system running and all your various Linux services. So it's, it's fantastic. And it's actually really um, nice and fast, this unit. It's virtually just asleep. So what I'm going to do, I might zoom out whether or not you can actually read this. I do not know, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to CD slash media slash USB. And in Linux, if you just hit tab, it'll auto complete those for you. So if I do an LS minus LA, you'll see there's nothing on that. Did I actually plug it in? Maybe. <laughs> Let me check where that USB drive went. So it's, there's an easy trick for you, by the way. If you unplug uh, I say easy, I've got a good chance of me pulling the Raspberry Pi out. If you actually unplug your pen drive and plug it in while you're still on this screen, if you type in tail DMESG, well, that doesn't work, sorry. There's a, probably a DMESG minus T or something. You'll get a list here and it will show you what the address is of your pen drive. And here you can see I've got an SDA directory bread block, blah, 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 failed, 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 failed. So it's not really doing well. Let's try one of the other USB. It's really not happy about that. Mount slash dev slash SDA one slash media USB. No. Well, this is the SD card that contains my ROMs and it's plugged into the appropriate port. <clears throat> Great. So anyway, it seems in my case actually that uh, my uh, SD card is actually corrupt. But what, what, what you could do when you were here is literally copy the games using cp star dot zip to slash home pi retro pi roms and then wherever as you see these all these games folders here Amiga Amstrad CPC Atari C64 etc you'll find a Neo Geo folder in the list if you look um, you can go into that Neo Geo and if your USB card was working unlike mine hit that it'll copy all the games from the SD card the USB card to the 
micro SD that the Raspberry Pi has actually got its operating system on. So when you reboot, all the games will be there, which I shall do now. So you can do this by typing sudo reboot. Now I know you don't actually have to reboot, you can just load the emulation station back up, but we'll go for the reboot. How embarrassing was that? So while that's doing that, you know, a little cop topic on these, I, I don't really know what's gone on with this. So I'm going to have to run a check on my desktop PC to see how I've managed to knacker this. But something you'll notice with uh, a um, the Raspberry Pis is that often they do tend to knacker your uh, SD cards and, S uh, and micro SD cards because with these devices, if you power them off, which you do, you know, we treat, we treat these like toys. We just pull the power on them, but we don't respect them in the same way we respect a PC and do a proper shutdown. And if it's in the middle of a write to those devices, those devices can sometimes become corrupt. So we just need to be careful of that. Right, so you've done all that and it's actually done it correctly, not like my example. And then when you go into your Neo Geo folder, you'll find a bunch of games. Some of these games aren't actually Neo Geo games. Uh, a lot of them are, but you'll find a Legend of Zelda or uh, Street... Oops, sorry. Just be careful. If you push left and right while you're in that menu, you're going to jump around a bit. Okay? Be very careful. So you find Street Fighter 2 Alpha. This is actually a CPS game. So it doesn't seem to matter what folder you put them into. It, it, the folders that the ROMs exist in seem to ma matter just purely for the menu because you can run them from anywhere. So just to show you the Street Fighter 2, let's go into that. Okay, before it loads, you get a little menu. If you interrupt that with your joystick, you can actually change the settings for the emulator um, for a per game and a per default. So there we go, putting in some credits. We're gonna press start. Oh. Hopefully you'll know which keys are which, I don't. So that's, where's Heavy Punch? I really hate the uh, Xbox controller for fighting games. Oh, come on. Pa! Okay. <laughs> You'll be better than me at Street Fighter, I'm sure. So you can see that was a, a CPS game, and then I'm going to go to Magical Drop, which we know is a Neo Geo game. And it's one I've discovered recently, and it's really good fun. Um, it's a bit like a Tetrisy Columns type game with a twist. So again, chuck in some more credits. You can see them going up here. So with Magical Drop, you've got one button that fetches uh, the spheres down, another button which throws them back up. Ready? Go. Right, so I'm going to get the yellow. And the one on the left, by the way. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry, I'm making a big mess of it here. Come on, it must be getting there. Oh. Oh, there we go. So just pushing the back and the start button will just take you back to the main menu. And then the B button on the Xbox controller, again, take you further back. So, there we go. 
So I hope that's been of some help to you. If you want to do that yourself, please go ahead and let me know how you get on. Please feel free to click subscribe or comment down below. And if you uh, care to make your own one, what I'd really advise you do, take all the same pieces, just assemble them, it's all standard, and then you know, build them into something interesting. Maybe a filing cabinet, a drawer, coffee table seems to be quite common, or something totally different. Thanks for watching. Oh,